powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. Our top story tonight, a man is suspected of shooting two others before killing himself at a Sanders County residence Saturday evening. The Sanders County Sheriff reports that about 9 p.m. on Saturday, dispatchers received reports that two people had been shot at home outside of Trout Creek. Deputies on scene confirmed that two people had been shot, an adult female who died on the scene, and a man who was transported to St. Patrick Hospital in Missoula with a gunshot wound. According to the statement, the suspect had fled the scene when the sheriff's deputies arrived. It was later found a short distance away from the residence with a self-inflicted fatal gunshot wound. Two Bear Air assisted in search efforts and the Sanders County Sheriff's Office says their investigation is ongoing. The names of the victims and suspects have not yet been released. Authorities have, re have released the name of a woman who died in a Thanksgiving crash in northwestern Montana. Flathead County Sheriff Chuck Curry says 28-year-old Frankie Elaine Sizemore of Columbia Falls died in a two-vehicle accident near Creston in, on Montana Highway 35. Curry says Sizemore was a driver and lone occupant in one of the vehicles involved in the crash <clears throat> that happened shortly after 7 p.m. on Thursday. For unknown reasons, Sizemore drove her Nissan sedan in oncoming traffic, and a 65-year-old Kalispell man heading northbound in a Chevy Tahoe was taking a right curve when he saw the Nissan in his lane of travel. The driver of the Tahoe braked and steered right to avoid hitting the Nissan, but struck it on the driver's side door. The woman inside was not wearing a seatbelt and was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the Tahoe was wearing a seatbelt and was not seriously hurt. The attorney for Guardian reporter Ben Jacobs sent a cease and desist letter today to U.S. Representative Greg Gianforte telling him and his staff to stop making false and defamatory statements about Jacobs. Jacobs' attorney claims Gianforte's spokesperson lied when he said no one was misled by the Republicans' initial denial of responsibility. Jacobs was body slammed by Gianforte on the eve of last May's special election. The original police report released earlier this month showed Gianforte falsely told investigators that Jacobs instigated the May 24th confrontation. Gianforte later pled guilty to formal charges. In response to that report, spokesman Travis Hall said no one was misled by Gianforte's initial statements. The 53rd U.S. Capitol Christmas tree has reached its destination. It began its two-week journey to our nation's capital from the Kootenai National Forest following its harvesting 45 miles north of Libby. MTN's Nicole Miller highlights the trek. The nation's 53rd U.S. Capitol Christmas tree has arrived in Washington, D.C. The arrival of the nearly 80-foot-tall Engelman spruce provided by the Treasure State was welcomed by the architect of the Capitol. Thank you all for joining us this morning as I accept the 2017 Capitol Christmas tree on behalf of the United States Congress. This year's tree comes from big sky country, the great state of Montana. The tree traveled more than 3,000 miles to its destination, making stops in Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Missouri, and Kentucky. This tree has been on quite a journey. I think the truck, if you see the inscription above the cab, says big sky, big tree, and big journey. That says it all. More than 3,000 miles, multiple stops along the way. Many people are responsible for getting this beautiful and enormous tree to the west front of the Capitol, and we truly appreciate their efforts to help bring the holiday spirit to Washington, D.C. We've been planning for this tree's arrival for many months. The tree will be lit by the Speaker of the House on the West Front Lawn next Wednesday. Lighting the Capitol Christmas tree on the West Front Lawn has been a tradition since 1964. And I hope that you'll join Speaker Paul Ryan, members of the Montana delegation, and myself on Wednesday, where we will continue this time-honored tradition. Reporting in Kalispell, Nicole Miller, MTN News. The tradition of the Capitol Christmas tree began in 1964 when Speaker of the House of Representatives John W. McCormick placed a live Christmas tree on the Capitol lawn. 
and switching to weather, it's looking to be a much less wet week than we had last week. And for more on what you can expect for the rest of your work week, let's turn it over to meteorologist Russ Thomas with his first forecast. Russ? Yeah, thank you. And I think specifically over the next three days, we have one small time frame where we're going to get some showers, and that really is it. So yes, drier weather, uh, certainly compared to what we saw last week. Look at our satellite and radar image. And again, a lot of the cloud cover we had earlier, at least the clouds that we had out there, uh, are really starting to diminish across the area. A few snowflakes falling in the higher elevations. We look at our current temperatures around the state. We're seeing a lot of temperatures right around that freezing mark. 31 Lewistown, 31 in Bozeman, 27 Butte, 32 in Missoula. And again, you can see a lot of numbers right around that point. We'll have more coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Russ, thanks. Sunday was the last day for open hunting season, and most stations got ended on a good note. Northwest Montana's Region 1 near Kalispell saw an increase on the final weekend of hunting season. Montana FWP reports that just under 9% of hunters ended the season with game, opposed to 7.5% the previous weekend. Over the six stations in the reason, region, there were about 16,000 hunters between October 21st and November 26th. The number of white-tailed deer was down compared to last year, but higher than the previous three seasons. And a total of 51 mule deer bucks were inspected in Region 1 this year, the lowest number since records were first kept in 1985. And for those that didn't find their elk during gentle hunting season, you may have a second chance. FWB's second antlerless elk shoulder season will get underway this winter. A shoulder season is a firearm season that occurs outside the five-week general firearms and archery seasons. There are 43 hunting districts open for elk shoulder season in six fish, wildlife, and park regions, but hunters should know the regulations that they differ between each district. Montana FWP wants hunters to do their research before heading out, since the season will be primarily on private lands and districts may have different openings and closing dates. It is also the hunter's responsibility to find a place to hunt and obtain landowner permission on private property. The Glacier Rail Park that broke ground on August 22nd and will now require some road closures to continue that work. Starting Monday, a number of roads in Evergreen will be shut down for a significant amount of time due to construction. The road closures are expected to last until June 30th, approximately eight months. Oregon Lane, Flathead Drive, and Montclair Lane are three of the roads that will be closed for eight months. A temporary road that was built for the subdivision to the north of Flathead Drive will help residents access Highway 2 during the construction. Currently, there are flaggers set up in the intersection of Montclair and the Rail Park to help cars navigate across the construction. <clears throat> LHC, a contracting company, wants to add that residents will still have access to their homes from alternate routes. On November 15, three conservation groups warned the Forest Service of their intent to file suit under the Endangered Species Act in order to protect the threatened bull trout. The groups are stating that the Forest Service's management of logging roads on the Flathead National Forest has threatened the bull trout species throughout culvert failures. Culverts are a structure that allows water to flow under the road from one side to the other. When the culverts aren't maintained properly, they can easily clog and eventually erupt, breaking the road above and sending debris into the stream. When the road sediment is sent into the trout's habitat, it can destroy their eggs and prevent the young fish from growing. Big Creek, Coal Creek, Jim Creek, Goat Creek, and Swan Lake are among some of the bodies of water that are affected. Keith Hammer, the chairman of the Swan View Coalition, one of the three groups threatening to sue, says he hopes the issue can be resolved without a lawsuit. The most favorable outcome here is that we don't end up having to sue. Mainly what we're asking the Forest Service to do here is live up to its prior promises. It already promised to do this, and yes, it has failed to do so. We're just saying step up to the plate and do your duty that you promised to the public. And the Forest Service has 60 days since the November 15th announcement to either fix the situation or fight the lawsuit. And coming up, Russ is back with the rest of your work week forecast. And an Indonesian earthquake forces evacuations throughout the city while hurling volcanic matter 9,800 feet into the atmosphere. Stay with us.